Hi, everybody. Let's talk about Kohler's Opus 89 Etude 15 this week. We have to talk about double tonguing right away. So if you feel insecure about your double tonguing, if your double tonguing feels brittle or your mouth just feels uncomfortable or your jaw locks up, my diagnosis would be that you're tonguing too short with not enough core to your sound. So the way to practice that would be to insert a long note before the double tongue to give you a little momentum into the double tongue and then to use a very long syllable thinking more like a French tu than an American ta. So um, working through that you could also practice making up little scale patterns, working on a warm up that you're incorporating double tonguing. The other spot that I wanted to address is measure two to three and 10 to 11, where we have subito dynamics. One way I practice that, adding in a beat's rest so that I have time to adjust and then gradually shortening the rest and observing that I'm not clamping down for either one. Whether I have more tension when I'm playing loud, try to relax that. If I have more tension when I'm playing soft, I'm trying to play really tiny, then I try to relax that. So I'm trying to counter my own tendencies with, um, with those two situations. Here's measure uh, 10 to 11. You could play it as a long note. So trying that. Um, moving forward here, I would say the, the very last line of the first page and the top line of the second page are in your daily practice list. Rhythmic distortion works great on this passage. And you can look up my other video for how to do that. You could also practice this passage, all tongued and then all slurred, so switching back and forth. Um, going into the cadenza, when we see an etude with a cadenza, I think there are some of us who think, yes, a cadenza. And some of us who think, oh no, a cadenza. So I'm talking to the people who say, oh no, a cadenza right now. And um, the way that you could break this down and make it manageable, I would recommend taking your metronome, put it on eighth note 120, play this at tempo. You could work all the way through it. This was from the high F sharp. I talked about subdividing a rallentando. So starting from the B natural, you could think one and hold the next note back into tempo, two and three, E and a four, or E, E and a, a, da, 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 da. So subdividing 30 second notes on that D sharp to spread out your thinking on that beat. Gradually, as you work this through, I'm sure you will have a much more natural flow to the cadenza. But just to sort of demystify all the spots and get, get everything spread out proportionally the way that it's written, um, just put the metronome on the eighth notes and let me know how that works. Eventually, you could take some time moving forward, trying to decide if two things are in a group or not in a group. You'll notice that the repeated notes um, have there's a group, I'm thinking of it as a group of three. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, with my dynamic. So I practiced it. So you can really break it down so that you feel more comfortable with this passage. The very end of this page, sweeping up and down through all of the range. This is a 
great passage to practice bending forward just to get a really ringy sound. So experiment with that and let me know if you get that kind of magic-y sound, an open tone that starts to happen with that exercise. So I hope this helps.